Hi everyone, this is Lindsay from Imaginary Rebel Art Studio. I've been trying to go live now for a couple minutes and it keeps booting me out. So hopefully this is going to stay live. It keeps telling me that the internet's not working. So I'm just going to go with it and <laughs> hope for the best. Um, I just kind of wanted to come on and do a quick live um, and uh, kind of just see how things are going with everyone. So when you come on, you know, say hi. Um, I probably not sure if I'll be able to see your comments, but I promise I will respond to them um, when the live is over. But um, let me just turn off the sound off of my iPad here so it doesn't like make it echo. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to kind of come on and do that. I hope everyone had a good 4th of July. Um, I kind of wanted to do this yesterday, but I felt like I needed to just take yesterday as a day of rest and just relaxation. It was the 4th, so that's it, you know, a day to do that. Um, I've kind of been sick recently, and you can kind of probably hear it in my voice, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be sniffly, and I'm, I'm going to try not to do that too much, but, but um, I am still have, I still do have a cold, and my voice is getting better, thankfully, um, but um, I finally was able to get some antibiotics, so good to go soon, hopefully, by Monday, be good as new, but anyway, um, I just wanted to come on, and again, do this quick tutorial. Um, this is a wooden barn quilt and I wanted to kind of come on and talk about those really neat kind of um, kind of display. They're uh, more like geometric shapes and so um, anyway I'm just gonna do like a little quick painting demo with them and um, and then uh, that'll be it. So I'm gonna get started. So today is again a little different than my usual lives, but I just wanted to come on and say hey and um, see how things are going with everyone. Um, so again, put it in the comments on how your 4th of July was. I'd love to hear what you get, what you did, and how your fireworks were. But um, anyway, so I am, this is a 12 by 12 square. And it has like a geometric shape printed on it already. And then there's these geometric shapes, um, these kind of diamonds that are cut out. And basically you make them into any kind of design that you would like. And so um, it's kind of a neat, kind of a neat, uh, kind of, ex not experience. It can't, it's actually an experience now. Um, it became huge kind of a pulp culture uh, thing in the South. So anyway, I'm gonna sit now and uh, talk about barn quilts. So I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna hope that this video will work this time because I've tried this like three times and it hasn't worked. So we're gonna, again, hope for the best. Okay, sitting down. I'm sorry again, I am very sniffly, but I'm Again, trying not to do that. And so there are many different colors that you can do for these type of quilts, but I'm gonna do my my base colors, which are my like logo colors, which are purple, pink, and teal. I'm not sure about this teal, but I'm gonna try it. Um, these paints right here are um, heavy duty heavy duty, <laughs> heavy body acrylic paint. So they're very um, opaque. They have lots of color. Um, these paints are kind of more transparent. And so you can kind of see through them more. They're not as, they don't have as much uh, pigment. And so I'm not sure kind of what I want to do yet. So I'm just going to kind of play around with it. Um, but anyway, I have just some basic brushes to use for that. Um, I am gonna glue them down, these diamonds, when I have the, sh the kind of pattern I wanna do. That's kind of at the end, and I don't know if I'll have that on camera or not, because I just kind of wanted to make this a quick little video, but I did want to, again, come on and say hi. 
And so I do have some white paint at the, on my side here because some of these colors are look really good uh, mixed with white. Um, but I was trying to decide um, what the outer colors should be. So I'm trying to think. So basically a little history about barn quilts. So barn quilts are made of wood. You know, like traditional quilts are usually, you know, made with fabric, you know. But these ones are made of wood and usually they're huge. They're like four feet by four feet or eight feet by eight feet. And they do used, used to like go on barns. But now they're on like houses and people give them as gifts. Like it's a huge now phenomenon that kind of broke out in the early 2000s. But um, I think I'm gonna do teal up here. I'm gonna try it. So I got lots of um, water on my brush and I'm gonna just take, I should just like, what I should do so I don't mix paint too much is I sh I'm gonna take my palette knife and just scoop out some paint onto my paper plate here and then mix stuff on here. I tend to do like mix my colors in there and then the color kind of changes and that's not good, not a good practice to do. So try to always um, mix your colors on your plate or your palette or whatever, however you want to do it. Just not in the jar, <laughs> not a good practice. And so let me get my, Thing here and so anyway um these barn quilts are actually um about 300 years old and they came from europe um and so the european immigrants came and kind of brought these traditions with them and um it just kind of really has again taken off um i think a lady in ohio in the 2001 um, created this um, I think it's like a American barn quilt trail where you can go to different states and people have these on their property on their barns and you can kind of drive by and see all the unique patterns and colors that people use so it's actually again become a huge thing um, it's really big kind of in the south. I know Kentucky and I think Tennessee are two states that really have these barn quilts like on their, again, by their front door or on their barn or um, just anywhere. And they kind of signify, um, what they used to signify is kind of the family culture. So when you're painting them, it's kind of like your family history is painted on here. Um, so it's really neat. It's really neat um, kind of tradition that I was looking into when I was um, wanting to paint one of these. And um, it's pretty neat. So again, if you Google barn quilts, um, there's like hundreds and hundreds of designs. People sell the patterns now. Um, it's like crazy. And so, um, it's just, I just wanted to do one and kind of, sh kind of show you and, um, share that culture history with you guys. Cause guess what? <laughs> so the American barn quilt trail that they've created is in 48 states except for Nevada, which is where I am, and I think Hawaii. Every every other state has some some barn quilt somewhere in the state where someone has you know made it official on the tour, I guess, cuz there's actual um you can actually take a trip where you just go and try to find them. And that's what a lot of people have done too, is try to find these barn quilts and, you know, go on these road trips, which I think would be fun to do. But anyway, <laughs> don't come to Nevada because they're not here. 
maybe that's some some trend I should start is um, barn quilt but um, anyway I'm just gonna paint these this teal color on the corners here and again you can use any kind of paint you want you can use I'm using acrylic heavy bodied acrylic which just means again it's a very heavy paint which is very opaque which um, basically just means you can't really see through to the wood because it's very thick and so um, I've been kind of experimenting with this kind of paint because I've been trying to find a paint that I like to use that is very opaque and very vibrant and just really, um, you know, looks amazing. Let's see, I guess I should just leave it that way. There we go. So anyway, I'm trying to think of what else to tell you about these barn quilts. I was pretty surprised when I looked online that you could, they're pretty much, again, in every state, I guess from like, you know, San Diego to like Vermont, you know, Rhode Island, all those states. No Nevada. <laughs> but anyway, excuse me, I'm sorry, I had to sniff, I'm very sniffly again. Very, I'm hoping to get better soon. With this heavy bodied acrylic, you do need to add some water to kind of make it go flow a little bit better. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, now that I have experimented with the heavy body acrylic, I've exper experimented with different brands. This one is Deco Art, but there's a, like a million different brands. But um, I have just think I decided that I mostly like a medium bodied acrylic, which is a little bit thinner than this, but not as thin as the craft paint. Um, it just is easier to work with, but I'm still experimenting. I was, um, I know I posted yesterday my neon jellyfish, so I'm really kind of um, experimenting with um, different neon colors, uh, more pigmented um, neon colors, um, and so it, I thought that came out really good. It was very vibrant. And again, I'm trying to find really vibrant colors um, to do my art work with. And so this is looking more blue on the screen, but it's teal, I promise. <laughs> um, but it kind of looks like it's matching that, which is kind of teal, but um, anyway, I was trying to think of what else I could tell you about uh, barn quilts. It's like a American folk art now um it's pretty neat uh you know they have these these shows these barn quilt shows now in the southern states again like kentucky and um tennessee it's huge but um it's really neat because it because you know um i'm i just moved here from oregon uh, Central Oregon and they have in Sisters Oregon, which is in Central Oregon every year they have a quilt an actual quilt like a fabric quilt uh, Show which is nationally known because I people from all over the country Go there and show their quilts and oh my gosh, they're so beautiful I mean and just they it's like an auction kind of for those quilts and you know people spend all year creating those quilts but they're just some of them are just beautiful and I mean most of them are and it's just really neat to see what kind of designs people can come up with and and you know just the time and the patience and the hard work that they put into it and you can see it you know and then you can also you can feel the fabric and it's just really um pretty neat I could probably post some of those pictures on my Facebook page if anyone's interested in seeing some really neat um, fabric quilts. 
But anyway, um, so I did that part. And so now that that part is done, um, oh, I missed up here. So let me go, see, I wanted to dip it in there again. Um, excuse me, all right, I'm gonna do that again. And you know, if I don't like this, um, the rule with acrylic, oh, as usual, so I had too much water on that. That's why it's so thin. Um, the rule, the rule, excuse me, with acrylic is if you don't like it, wait till it dries and then you can change it, paint over it and nobody knows that it was even there. And you know, that's kind of the thing with hiss. If I don't like how I like how I painted it, then I'll just paint over it and make something new. And that's why I like painting so much, especially with acrylic. Um, you know, there's some things that I paint that I don't like, and I'm sure other people would like it, but I just don't like it, and so I paint over it. I paint it black, and I paint something else. And um, usually the second thing that I paint, in my opinion, is better than the first thing I painted. Because usually, you know, what you're supposed to do when you paint is you're supposed to take a beat. You're supposed to paint for, let's say, an hour, and then you're supposed to stand up and walk away from it, especially when you're getting frustrated with it. And when you come back to it is usually when the genius happens. That's the second part of it was when, you know, the, the good ideas come and and they give you this inspiration that you didn't have before. So sometimes taking a step back, even a day back or anything like that is really helpful. So just keep that in mind when you're painting. You don't have to finish everything in one day, especially if you're frustrated with how things are going. I mean, you may paint over something like 12 times, but the 13th time could be, you know, your masterpiece, the piece that you love the most. And so just keep at it. That's like the number one thing is just keep practicing, keep at it. I'm just going to finish up with this side here. The teal, which I'm sorry, it looks blue on the camera, but it's teal. <laughs> Excuse me again, I'm getting sniffly. Sorry, I know that probably doesn't sound good, but I'm trying. I got antibiotics, I'm trying to get better here. But I definitely wanna know how everybody's 4th of July was. So again, in the comments, please let me know. I'd love to to talk with everyone and see. You know, I just kind of stayed at home and watched them from my backyard. It was great. Didn't have to go anywhere. It was just came right in the backyard. You know, it was nice. Because sometimes when you go somewhere, you're like stuck in traffic for an hour afterwards. And, you know, didn't have to do that last night. So that was nice. Okay, so I am done with that for now. So I'm going to do a different color. So what I'm trying to decide is basically I have to paint on here um, whatever design I want to do and then I have to paint it on here. And then I guess I don't have to, but just in case it moves or something I usually like to paint it underneath. I don't know. This is the second part is you paint the design and then you paint these and then you glue them on once you have it down. So I was thinking about having the middle be white and then kind of alternate the purple and the pink on here kind of like a flower I guess um, or I guess if I want it to be a flower I could paint the center black um, and do this that kind of thing so if anyone is on with me 
maybe recommend something, but I'm thinking I want it to be bright. So the thing with barn quilts, they're bright because they, they have to be seen from the road. They can't have any type of dark colors on them typically. And so I think I'm gonna do white and we're gonna just see how that goes. So I'm just gonna get into my white and just kind of paint in here. I might have to do like a, maybe an outline, we'll see. But yeah, so I just kind of wanted to give some education about something new that maybe, you know, people don't know about. I didn't know about them either. But when I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. Especially when they're huge. They're big. They're, again, eight feet by eight feet. That's a huge, huge piece of wood. It can also be like an aluminum, but I think it's mostly made out of wood. And so how this kind of started, too, was, um... You know, people just painted on blocks of wood that they had, just scraps that they had that they just didn't know what to do with. And so they just kind of made them into like geometric shapes. And um, then that's also kind of how people have made the these kind of quilts before. So it's kind of cool. There's a lot of different ways. Oh, I know a lot of people sell kits now um again patterns there's patterns and if you again if you google barn quilts they're actually kind of expensive and i'm assuming because they're made of wood you know and some of them are you know are, i'm sure made on some good wood and they're heavy and that's maybe why they're so expensive but it's also you know an artist someone made that so it's kind of neat So again, I'm just painting the center white. I just think that will be pretty color. And, and actually, you don't have to have these 3D pieces. You don't have to have these like diamond shapes and make it look 3D. You can just paint this. And I think that, I mean, what people do is they just paint it on wood. But sometimes you can take these, you know, 3D shapes and put them on there. I know when I was looking at, um, some different patterns I, pe I see people are so inventive now they kind of you know there's there's different sh there's different patterns and they have different meetings so this one is the star there's like a pinwheel there's a flower and then now there's like pets people have put pets um have made a pet face out of this they've made like bird faces there was a cardinal one that I saw. I mean, it's gotten very um, more kind of um, involved and people have become very um, inventive with these barn quilts. But again, it's just something cool that um, something different. And again, there's road trips you can take now and I mean, pretty neat. And I was thinking I could do one as like a, for like Christmas as like a snowflake. That might look pretty too, but like, well, I know there's like Christmas in July, but I'm just gonna try this and see what happens. And if I don't like it, again, paint over it, make something different. But I have heard that these are really good for paint parties. So I was thinking about, I mean, again, it's not, I guess, a huge hit here in Nevada since there's None here in Nevada, but I mean, I've seen it on Facebook that people have done these as paint parties or just fun little get-together parties. 
So definitely good idea. And for kids too, I think this would be a fun thing for kids to do, kind of design their own geometric, and you don't even have to call it a quilt, you can just say geometric shapes here, you know. But anyway, there's the center of that. And then I'm gonna try, I really like this magenta color. It's very pretty. It's a very pretty magenta. Um, I was painting something else, a uh, different painting with it and it was just so pretty. And uh, I'm gonna try it on here. And then I might try it with some white because I know it looks good with white too. But um, let me get my brush wet. Because again, it's heavy body, so you really need some water to get it going, but not too much. You don't want it like dripping, and you don't want your brush dripping with water either. So I'm just going to do like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to paint up here. I'm just going to paint like every other one. This purple. See, it's kind of too, I put too much water in there. And I don't know if you can see that, maybe. If I can maybe push it down more where you can see it more. Um, but it's too thin. So I'm gonna just take a little bit more and kind of put it on top here. And I can go down, I think I might have to go down to my other brush in order to do these smaller squares. We'll see. I don't know, this light is like kinda making it hard to see that, but. So I'm gonna, I did that one, so I'm gonna go over here and do this one. And then I'll kind of clean up the edges at the end. But I'm just kind of painting this section here. And again, I might go to my smaller brush, but I'm just gonna see. I'm trying to do it in a kind of a hurried way just to kind of do this video, but I'll kind of perfect it afterwards and I'll take a picture of it. So there's that one, so this one. Again, every other one. So one, two, three. This one. So not this one. So this one. For me, painting is very therapeutic. I like doing it. Um, well, I like doing it as a business, but I also just love painting. I love just. I have so many ideas, and I have. I write them all down, and you know, I'm sure this happens with all artists. Is they have so many ideas, but there's only so many hours in the day. You know. And I don't get to work on my paintings as much as I used to. I mean, I do in a way. I mean, I do the weekend and today, Fridays. Um, but um, it's just, I just really enjoy it and I try to come up with different ideas, different things to paint. Um, and so I just really enjoy it. It's a good hobby um, to have, to kind of like just get stress out. You know, you don't think about stress while you're painting typically. So I do recommend finding something if, if you don't like painting or if you're like, ah, I'm not good at it or whatever. Find something that you like doing and just kind of do it for half an hour, you know, an hour 
and just really, you know, focus on it and just let the wor world kind of fade away. And that's what I do, and it's nice. So I'm trying not to get this purple in the white. Actually, I was thinking about it because I don't want it to turn like a bright pink color. I do want it to try to stay this darker color, but we'll see. I kind of got part of that white from the center in this one, and so I'm not trying to not do that on this one. But again, if it another thing with acrylic um, is when it dries, it dries darker. So if it dries too dark, I might put some white on it change the color of it because again we want this to be really bright and colorful because um, that's what they're supposed to be and then this is meaningful to me because these are my logo colors these are the colors that I love and my favorite colors and colors that I have in my business And I love my business. I love painting. I love teaching people how to paint. I love it. So why not paint it? Paint that love. So I'm skipping that one, I'm going to this one. When I first did this, um, gosh, I think I made one of these like when I first started two years ago and it was horrible. <laughs> it was horrible and I, and I made a video of it and it was not geometric at all and it was misshaped and it was horrible. And I didn't felt like I didn't want to do them again, but this is why I did a wooden one this time because last time I did it on um, a canvas where I drew it out. And um, it was right when I first started kind of um, painting on videos and you know starting my business, and I just was like, ugh, very frustrated with it. But um, Kind of, it's kind of different now, and it's just kind of neat to reflect on the past and how much kind of I feel like I've grown as an artist and just in general, how you know you just get ideas for things and just how you kind of change and evolve. It's kind of neat to kind of reflect on that. Okay, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. So this one, I think just a couple more now for this color. And you know, that purple is really dark, so I might not, maybe I might not do purple. I don't know. I was really wanting to do my colors, but I'm see, I'm thinking as I'm doing this, because I didn't really pre-plan this design. I'm just kind of going with it as it goes, kind of. And so I'm thinking that that purple is going to be too dark. And so I'm thinking maybe I might want to do like a yellow color to kind of brighten it. You can always change your mind. You can always change the design. You don't have to make it exactly like how you see it. You always can change things. And again, another thing why I like painting you can, you're like, sky's the limit, really. You, you, you don't have to kind of fit into every, like, do everybody's idea. You can do your own thing, and it will still be amazing. Okay, so 
that is how that is. So I'm actually gonna get the yellow of this color, of this kind of paint, and kind of do that and see, because I think that's gonna be better, because this purple is very dark. You can see that, very dark purple. And I don't want that to be on here, now that I'm thinking about it. So I'm doing a second here. Gonna get it out of here, hopefully. I can find it. Is it? Yep. Okay. I have a little cart that I have all my paint on. That's really neat that I got on Amazon. That really helps kind of keep all my paints together, keeps me organized. So this is the yellow I'm gonna use. I think that's nice and bright, as you can see. And again, I'm gonna put Get some out on my palette knife. Put it on here. Yellow is a really pretty color with these colors. I think they, they, they go well together. So I think it's a good idea. We're gonna try it out. So again, I'm getting some water on my brush, but I'm, not, I'm trying not to make it super, super wet. I'm just gonna Get this on here. We're gonna try it out. So I'm gonna put this yellow down. The only issue is, is that the yellow, even though this is very opaque, yellow is a color that is very translucent, which means that you will be able to see through it. And so it's not coming out as bright as I want it to. And so I think I'm gonna add some white to it to kind of lift it. And that the yellow, the yellow transparency is is the way it is with yellow, and it's any kind of yellow, whether it's heavy bodied or craft paint. It's just the way yellow is made. So if you're like, oh, this is so thin, it's just the way it is. So I'm gonna kind of put some white in there. I'm gonna kind of mix some white with some of that yellow. I still want it to be that kind of rich yellow, but I just needs to be a little lighter because it's just not picking up like I want it to. So I'm just trying to mix it a little bit more, make it a little bit lighter here. So I think that's just a lot better. Yeah, I think that worked a lot better actually. So you let me know in the comments what you think, but I think that yellow with a little bit of white really helped help that out. And so basically I'm just gonna paint the other portions of this. So again, this is kind of the design that I chose. And again, right in the middle of it, I changed my mind on what colors I wanted. And again, that's okay. That's okay as an artist. It's okay to be different. It's okay to change your mind. I can't quite see it. A little bit here. Let me change it a little bit here. So uh, that one has not as much, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of white in that. That's a lot better. I 
And again, I'm kind of going outside the lines, which is okay. I'm going to like paint over it a little bit when it dries and then you won't be able to really see that. So I'm just using a larger brush. That's why that's happening. You could use a smaller brush and that won't happen. But I'm just trying to get this painted. I might have to have a part two of the video where I finish it up and put the tiles on there. I didn't want to go too late here. I'm trying to think of. Well, I'm about 40 minutes, so I was going to try to do like half an hour to an hour, so maybe about maybe 10, 15 more minutes left. See how much I can get done. These aren't meant, I mean, these little ones, these little 12 by 12 squares aren't really meant to take a long time. And really, if you did it on your uh, mixed media pad ahead of time and you designed what you wanted it to look like, probably would go really quick. I can kind of see that the pink doesn't look very pink. It looks kind of red on the camera, but it is like a pink on here. But it's drying a, a darker color. So again, I might have to think about something else on that. Maybe a different pink, lighter pink color. I'm not a fan of baby pink, so I try to stay away from the baby pinks. But there are some really nice, like, hot pinks and things like that. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And then I'm going to move it over a little bit. Again, putting some white in my yellow. Just trying to lighten it a little bit. Just so I can lift it. Kind of move this over a little bit so you can see this side. also don't want it to be like a light pastel yellow. I want it just to be a little bit lighter than the color it is. I'm not a huge fan of pastels either, which I, is why I think I don't like baby pink because that's kind of a pastel color. But. I was thinking about doing like a sunflower, but I might do that on another one. So there we have it with that. So those are the colors that I chose for that part of the barn quilt. So now what I could do is I can change up the colors on these guys that I actually put down. Kind of make it a little bit different. I could do that, but I'm going to end it right now and I'm going to say stay tuned to part two where I paint these and glue them down and then we finish this barn quilt. So that will be 
tomorrow, Saturday. But I hope everyone enjoyed this little tutorial and my little history that I had behind it. And um, I hope everyone has a good night and happy Friday and I'll uh, see you for part two.